Hey, what's going on everyone? I apologize for the delay in going live here. We're at the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary with Amy and David once again. And uh, we were having some poor connections, so we came on over to David's office where I'm on the Wi-Fi network. And I want to show you what we're going to do here live today um, from Bush Wildlife. You see this baby gator got himself snagged on a uh, lure, and he's got a hook through his top eyelid. Um, so David is now, right now, assessing. We have taken some, uh, we were in the hospital, and we took some x-rays. And uh, those x-rays, um, okay. why'd you take x-rays if you can see that the hook is clearly right there? One, to make sure that, that we knew where all the hooks were and to make sure that we didn't have a second hook that was ingested. Yeah, cool. So it's a precautionary thing there. Hey, everybody, glad you're all jumping on here. Uh, pretty exciting stuff. This is what we're doing live. Now, the cool thing about bush wildlife is, oh, wow, we, we, he's got it through his bottom. Yeah. It's a treble hook. Yeah, it's a treble hook. It's a three-pronged hook. And uh, he's in a lot of discomfort, so we, we're going to be quick. I know people get upset, you know, if we don't, we're talking and doing our thing. So David's going to start working, and um, we're going to try and get this guy feeling comfortable here. But as you can see, we got to cut the barbs off, and he's got to do it in such a way that we don't do any damage to this uh, this animal's eye. And luckily for the gator, it did not hit his eyes. Watching our nice. eyes too. Exactly, got to watch his eyes and. The lovely Amy is hanging out with us. So yeah, this guy got, he got three prongs in there pretty darn good. So David, you're going to work him on out, huh? Yeah, I'm trying He's to work working it out right now. Out. Okay, got that one That's out. great. Okay. That's pretty uneventful there. All right, let's hope we can get the second one. <laughs> well, no. We I, like uneventful. We like, exactly. When talking about animals and their comfort, we want it to be, uh, we want it to be uneventful. And the cool thing, guys, and I'll get to your questions in a minute. I, I, I have the camera reversed, so I cannot see... Uh, what's happening guys I can't see your questions yet but we will get to them uh, I just want to get some information out first and some things about the sanctuary and what I think is really cool about bush wildlife hold, hold on hold the side, hold the side. Hold the side. Yeah. all right Amy's gonna hold them David's gonna keep that thing and good we got both barbs out so what's cool about bush is not only the cuddly uh, fluffy animals get care here but the scaly ones as well you guys have saved gators you've saved crocodiles david you actually had your hand down a crocodile's throat at one point didn't you both alligators and crocodiles i have i have anesthetized them and reached down into their stomach to uh, to be able to uh, um, retrieve the hook. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And that was a big American alligator. Um, the crocodile. The crocodile. crocodile was, excuse was 12, me. Twelve feet long. It was actually twelve feet long. Wow, that's really cool. Fluffy. Man. Yeah, fluffy. Yeah, very nice. But look, so you can see there's a little bit of superficial damage right here to his upper eyelid. But as long as that nictitating membrane is good, he'll be able to to still see underneath the water and. Uh, function just like any old animal. What's this? Some kind of? Uh... It's just an antibiotic, and we're going to flush it. You know, okay. that's just being all kinds here. of bacteria and stuff on that hook. So right. we'll just try to clean some of that out. Now, here's the thing, too. Just looking at the way that this was in there, um, this was hooked into the eye. Uh, well, it's possible that this one may have been hooked in the. Um, in the mouth and they got that out prior to it coming to us but they couldn't get it out of the eye because that's kind of a weird way to, to get hooked in the eye like that it yeah. almost looks like someone was actually casting you know right towards the uh the animal the, the alligator yeah yeah and you, you know you, you, you would like to think that that doesn't happen but people do weird stuff right you know it's it's a shame but you know you don't want to intentionally hook an animal so he's going to flush the eye some more but you know the prognosis on a guy like this i mean the eyeball itself looks good and gators being as tough as they are uh he should be fine huh he should he should do just fine now here's part of the problem here in in florida um you know the state does not want relocation of alligators that are over four feet long okay um so when it comes to a smaller alligator like this that we can do a very very simple procedure we can remove the hook and get the you know alligator back out we're allowed to be able to do that but long-term rehabilitation for an alligator especially anything that's going to be over four feet long uh, is something that cannot be released back so that's the where our buddy usually crocodile kyle comes in you guys watch the show. Uh, Kyle has created himself a bit of a, uh, you know, a, a way to help out in those search situations uh, with his facility. But uh, this is pretty cool, man. So I mean, otherwise the I mean the alligator looks in good condition. I mean he's got good good weight on yeah. him. 
It doesn't appear that there's any other problems. And we've gotten alligators like this that, you know, the fish hook is, is way down here. Right, into his body. Or, or even into the stomach. Um, it, alligator skin, reptile skin in general, is very, very hard to heal. So when you do surgery and you, you actually make an incision and then sew it back up, it's not as easy as just closing it up like a like it would be for a mammal. It takes a longer time to heal. So doing abdominal surgery or something like that becomes more difficult, more dangerous. Plus, reptiles can develop an infection that takes you know months before it manifests. Right, itself. right. So. As we all know, if you guys are out there. So, all right. So check this out, guys. Let's get to some questions. I think I can reverse the camera and read your questions. Yes, I can. Awesome. So um, I'm able now to uh, read your questions, folks. So if you guys have any questions for David or Amy here uh, at Bush or, you know, what would you guys think? You know, all right, how many times a day do you have to do this? This is from Dom Don is asking. <laughs> Luckily, uh, I, I can almost answer this. I don't think they do this every single day with an alligator, but it, it happens more well, frequently, doesn't well, it? As far as medical procedures are concerned, every day we have to do something. Uh, okay. There are over 10 animals a day that are admitted to to our facility. Okay, there you go. So over 10 animals every single day come in with some kind of medical, uh, uh, you know, medical Necessity. issue. Yeah, and they, they're taken care of. Uh, let's see, make recovery on this crocodile. The crocodile is going to recover just fine. Uh, if I'm in Florida, how can I get involved with you guys? Spick Dan asks. Spicky Dan, I believe is his name. Yeah, we're, we're about to say in Florida, are you located would well, be the yeah. question. Because um, we're, we're in Jupiter, which is not far from West Palm Beach. So you'd have to be in somewhat close proximity to do that. Mm -hmm. well, and I guess you would just basically come on down to the office here, fill out an application for to be a volunteer and or get online. involved. You can get one online too. That's right, at Bush Wildlife. Dot org, uh, and you can also donate to these fine people because a lot of times they get animals in. People do a good deed and bring the animal in, but unfortunately, that's where they leave, and you really have to leave some kind of donation because um, the average donation here, when someone drops off an injured animal, is six dollars, and you can tell them, you know, the just the care and just the medical equipment and the time uh, costs more than that. Just so. all you have to do is just think about the amount of time that you spend on an animal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the equipment that we're using. I mean, the x-rays, we took the x-rays of, of the uh, alligator today to make sure that everything else was okay. I don't know if uh, anybody got a chance to see the x-rays. No, we didn't. That, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, the uh, phone wasn't picking up a good enough signal. That's why we moved over here to the office. They have a beautiful um, hospital that you guys may have seen uh, in many videos that we've done here from Bush. Uh, but today, just for the sake of our video, we thought this was an interesting procedure. I know a lot of my fans love reptiles. So. It was funny. He walked in the door just as, yeah. you, were, just as you were walking <laughs> up, so. He was asking me, what do you want to do today? And I was like, I don't know. And this guy showed up. I was like, there it is. There's our video. Um, so, you know, we're in here because we have a wireless uh, connection. And, um, you know, it's exciting, man. It's, it's really cool to see them do work on a reptile. Uh, they, the, um, the number one reptile you guys probably save our turtles, huh? Turtles are probably the number one reptile that comes in. Uh, we get turtles that are hooked on fishing line. We get turtles that m mostly hit by cars are probably the number one cause of injury that we see. Right. Uh, we do occasionally get snakes, uh, believe it or not. You yeah. Know, we, we get snakes that, that come in. Um, lizards, alligators. Yeah, that's cool. Actually, I uh, you called me a few months back about a snake that was stuck in a fence and I had to go out and rescue a snake and use corn oil and wiggle a snake out of a uh, hole in a fence. It was quite exciting. It, it amazes me how wildlife gets stuck. Not even just a snake. We've had a fox that got tangled up in in a, a, a field fence. Mm -hmm. it was coyote. Actually, was, was, uh, we had a coyote that, that, that did the same thing. Uh, the fox had his head stuck in a, in a gate. Um, had a raccoon stuck in a dumpster <laughs> tried to burrow his way out. That's, That's crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah, there was a tear in the, there was, dumpster diving. There was a tear in the dumpster and the raccoon tried to get out and got stuck. Oh man, well, because he ate too much and he couldn't get back, he couldn't out. Get back out. Uh, so we got some good questions here, okay? Brian Johnson asks, what percentage of road accidents heal for the turtles? I mean, how often can you get the turtles saved? It, it depends upon the extent of, uh, of the injury. Uh, crack shells are, are easy, but when you have a, a big separation or you have a compression fracture, where now you have a lot of damage that's been done to the internal, internal organs, that becomes difficult. Um, however, 
as you drive around the sanctuary, we, we have released a lot of turtles mm -hmm. here. Uh, we have a number of turtles that are here uh, that we run into on a regular basis. They have these massive scars, and you, you take a look at them, and you go, how in the world did this turtle yeah. survive? But he's out there. He's, he's out there. Being a turtle. You know, years later. That's cool. Good. We got another question, and I think, you know, Adam Barber asks, uh, was this painful for the alligator? I, I would imagine so. Um, you know, it, that's a weird. It's a weird question to answer because a animals have a different threshold of pain than than we do. Uh, if that was you or I, trust me, you'd be screaming bloody murder. Right. In the situation of the alligator, it's a lot easier to be able to do this. And if you notice, the animal really didn't move a whole lot, so it made it a lot easier for us to be able to handle and not have to anesthetize them. Right. And then we have Wishbone1231. One, one. What was the worst injured animal you cared for? And as we, before we answer that, there's Ed. That's our man on the street, man. He's a, <laughs> Ed's the dude that brings in a lot of these animals that are injured. So he's a volunteer. You're a fireman at one point, right? Retired paramedic fireman. There you go, man. So he's now saved from saving human lives to saving animal lives in his retirement. So hands together for my friend Ed. Uh, we're doing good things here. So worst injured animal that you think you've come across, they're asking about. And, um, you know, I mean, it's kind of tough. David's been at this. It, that is an alligator, Ed. Uh, uh, it's mouth is taped, but he will jump at you. The worst injured animal, Ed. Ed. Ed, 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 Ed. Hey, everybody, Ed here. We're just hanging out. Uh, um, no. it, it, it's a hard one because we've seen some pretty bad fractures. We've seen um, jaw fractures uh, that we've been successful. We have some uh, dentists, oral dentists, that, uh, um, oral surgeons who have helped us That's actually cool. reconstruct uh, the jaws of, of, of animals like bobcats and foxes. Uh, we've seen some pretty bad injuries when it comes to birds where they've had uh, um, severe fractures where we've put an external fixer on and have successfully been able to release them back out, out to the wild. Great. Uh, we've got some videos that, that maybe you can put on onto your YouTube page and uh, people can get a chance to see some of the cool releases after some of the dramatic. You know, injuries. that would be that would be a fun uh, video to make. We could do a special uh, bush wildlife release video where you can actually see, you know, I've been on a few releases. Uh, actually, that's where you coined the term, the lovable narcissist, that's what she calls me. Amy says that about me. We went and released some uh, hawks we that day and that's on our YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, we have that. So you guys go back in the catalog and check it out. That's always the best feeling I would imagine is when you guys get animals back out into the wild. I mean, that's that's the goal here at Bush Wildlife anyhow. The main goal is to get animals back out to the wild. Um, the, the sad part of it is, is that probably only 35% of the animals that are admitted get a second chance to go back out mm. to the wild because we're dealing with terminal injuries and terminal illnesses that there's just no way that, that we can fix. Gotcha. And if I can interject for one second, because I do agree 100%, getting it back out in the wild, that we do have animals that can't return to the wild, but can mm -hmm. have a good quality of care, a good quality of life in captivity, and being able to educate people. Right, they become and ambassadors. seeing that light bulb yeah. moment. Seeing them actually start to care about an alligator that they'd normally be scared of and want to help it. That, you know, it's just a whole different level. Of right. Now, we're getting some questions, and I can answer these real quick. Um, you know, will it affect his eyesight? Uh, you know, this animal, the, the, if you guys look up close here, the animal's uh, eyeball is perfect. Uh, so there's no drama there. So that guy's going to be fine. You can see, though, right towards the back of the eye, there's the nictitating membrane just moved. No worries. But right where Amy's pointing, just a little bit of the flesh has been removed. But gators are so tough, uh, that's not going to be a big deal, you know? Um, how did you guys happen to know this happened to the alligator? It was brought into the sanctuary with a hook in its eye. So uh, <laughs> that's all we got. Um, do you take care of amphibians? If an amphibian came in and was able to be saved, I think you would... We've actually done surgery on, surgeries on Stop frogs. Stop it. You're no. kidding me. Yeah. No. You've done surgeries on frogs. It's we, not fun. It's not <laughs> <laughs> Anesthesia on them is very difficult, but yes, we've done it. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, we're having a great time here. We're, uh, we're going to wrap it up with a few more questions and let everyone get back to work because it is a very busy place here. Uh, would you take in a lion? Yes, they take in panther. They've done a lot with uh, Florida panthers, puma con color, that's the Latin name, um, and the Florida panther is a subspecies of that. Um, yeah, you got, I mean, I've actually been in on a few procedures with some of your, uh, sure. some we, of your mountain lion or uh, cougar. Our main focus is with Florida native wildlife. Uh, so most of the animals that you're going to see here that are either permanent residents or that we're taking care of, um, are going to be native Florida wildlife. However, 
We often respond to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission where they have a confiscation that, that, needs, that needs to be taken care of. Uh, they may have um, uh, an animal that's escaped or we even work with other organizations that don't have the medical uh, support team that we do here at the sanctuary and Bush Wildlife Sanctuary serves as that medical facility to be able to treat their animals. And we've seen everything from lions and tigers and leopards and anything that you yeah. can imagine. Um, and the other cool thing, and you know, for me personally, when getting involved with the folks here with David and Amy is that, you know, when they do get exotic reptiles, you know, myself or Kyle and a few other guys that you may have seen on videos, Fred Grunwald, uh, work closely with Bush and try and provide them with a place where some of these animals that are brought in that might have been confiscated that we can hold them until uh, the animals are placed in a proper, you know, home. If it's an animal that needs permits, so on and so forth, we'll do that. So that's how Camp Kennan helps out Bush from time to time. Um, and uh, guys, I, I, I saw a couple other questions, but I forget them now. I am, uh, I am a little, I'm still recovering from Costa Rica, believe it or not. I ate a bad tilapia, let me tell you. Don't eat a bad tilapia in Costa Rica. <laughs> You'll bring home souvenir you didn't expect. Anyway, um, that's me. My GI track is fine, thank you very much. Uh, this guy's eyeball is fine, thanks to David and Amy, and I guess we're going to sign off now. And uh, there you have it, folks. I'm going to keep bugging David now to get some uh, Wi-Fi in the hospital so we can keep bringing you really cool quality content from Bush Wildlife uh, and show you firsthand what it takes to be uh, involved with uh, rescuing and saving wildlife. So thank you. Thank you. My yep, pleasure. Thank you. All right, everybody, thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. And before I leave, well, how about some king snakes? Little king snakes here. And these guys are going to be moved into their new, there's an indigo snake. Uh, so, you know, David, we're going to be doing, we should do a video when we I, build the new enclosures. And, and I was just saying, you know, when we go in to feed and clean, we could uh, do a live video. We could do a live video from the snake room as well. Um, so that would be fun. All right, everybody. See you next Thursday. Don't forget, Sunday bonus video. I don't know what it's going to be. And we have more exciting uh, videos Tuesday from Costa Rica coming up. See you soon. So long. Here's the alligator. Say goodbye. See you, everybody.